trying to learn how to golf. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. I will provide the link to this story because it's funny. This story actually came to me from an anti-Kevin Samuels uh, detractor. And she posted this on a Kevin Samuels fan website. And she basically said, so much for buying a dog and dying alone. Because Kevin Samuels basically said, you know, these modern women who failed to attract a mate and failed to change themselves at all or alter their, how should I say, their standards in order to attract a mate. He basically said that these women were going to have to buy a dog and die alone. So basically, she posted this as if this was some type of counterpoint to say that women won't have to buy a dog and die alone. Now, the story here... Seven Chinese girlfriends buy mansion so that they can retire and die together. And this is by Christopher Cameron. Now, first of all, I'd like to point out, number one, that these are Asian women. Asian women, and I've seen this personally because I've lived in China specifically, and these are Chinese women, by the way. Um, they're used to getting along, living in tight quarters, they're used to that. Like, I remember when I was in uh, Fudan University, the uh, female students, there were a lot of them in some of those rooms. Like, um, they'd be like, in, a, in, in an American dorm room, you might have just two people sharing a certain size dorm room. But in that exact same size dorm room, you'd have maybe five to six Chinese students in that same sized room. I actually took pictures of this, and I still have those pictures in my uh, uh, saved in my hard drive somewhere because they came off of a, a regular camera. This was long before you know iPhone. But anyway, these aren't American women here. Now I'm not saying that American women couldn't do this. I'm just saying that between the selfishness and the she did this to me and the he did that and all that that the nonsense. I don't think they'd be able to work this out. What I've also noticed is which, when you do have a lot of these young women getting together in order to afford apartments that they obviously never could have afforded on their own, what happens when one of them decides that they want to move out? What happens when one of them decides, oh, you know what? I'm tired of this. I want to move back with my parents. Well, then now they got to find somebody else. Now, usually if you have a bunch of friends, they're not going to want to lose one of these people and then have to replace that person in order to keep making those rent payments. So, you know what? I'm just going to read this portion of the story. And I'm also going to provide the link so you can see it yourself. It says, seven Chinese women are taking the golden girls approach to aging after purchasing a house together for their retirement. At first, it was just a joke. The girlfriends say in a video post on YouTube from media startup Etiao. Uh, featuring their brand new 7,535 square foot house in the suburbs of Guangzhou, um, a major city in southeast China near Hong Kong. Guangzhou. Guangzhou. Um, we said that we would get together when we were 60 and live the retired life together. That was back in 2008, a decade on Next Shark reports they've made their friendship fantasy a reality, pooling some $584,000 to buy and completely remodel a dilapidated red brick house an hour outside the Chinese village into a light-filled, glass-coated showstopper. Um, I'll try to take a look at the pictures if I can a little bit later, but I can't play the video because I don't want these assholes at the New York Post tried to file a copyright claim. So anyway, um, we've known each other for over 20 years, says the video's narrator, who notes that their ages span about 10 years. We were colleagues and sometimes we are even closer than siblings. The three and a half story estate is surrounded by paddy fields. It features shared space on the ground floor and the individual bedrooms for each of the ladies on the upper level. Highlights include huge tatami mats for group hangs. A tatami mat is basically a Japanese mat that you usually sleep on or sit on, basically. Um, 
a tea room furniture collected in india and morocco and of course a long dining table for group meals outside there is a swimming pool and even an airy tea pavilion connected via a bamboo walkway so i'm guessing that these are the women right here in fact i have a chinese female friend and you know what's funny? This chick right here looks just like my Chinese female friend. I'm going to send her this story. I want her to read this because I want her to see what she thinks about this. Because that one actually looks exactly like one of my... Uh, that looks exactly like her. I'm going to even point out to her that that one looks just like her. Even though I know that's not her. Um, I can't see the other one back there. This one right here looks like one of those characters from The Matrix. Um... That one right there, can't see a face too well, but yeah, I, I don't know. So anyway, uh, we'll probably cook together, barbecue in the fields, sing and collect food in the village, the friends say in the video. We joke that each of us should practice one skill so that we won't be lonely and fight with each other 10 years later. Now you tell me while I'm reading this, does this sound like an American woman's way of thinking? The answer is no, it does not. This sounds like somebody who's used to getting along with other people. And I guess you could say that when you're in like a communist country, especially where, you know, people are, you know, bred to work together and to strive for a, a common goal, then yeah, most likely you would get more of this. But does this sound like an American group of women at all? You tell me, I maybe I'm wrong because I already know I'm not. But you tell me, does this sound like American women? Does this? Do you think that a bunch of American women would get together and say, yeah, each of us should learn a skill so that this way we'll be able to make it? Does that sound like that? No, no. In fact, that actually sounds like something that American men would do. That sounds like a male trait, actually. That that Because see, what, what would ultimately happen, and they, they've pointed this out because they've actually run trials and studies, if you had a bunch of men on an island and you had a bunch of women on another island, the women would get like nothing accomplished and they would literally die. Now, the men would figure out who's good at what and the men would basically say, OK, you know what, uh, Greg, you know how to build houses. So Pete and Joe, they're going to go and they're going to gather up logs and sticks and shit and we're going to bring it to Greg and then we're going to send out uh, Mike and Mike is going to go fishing and blah, blah, blah. And before you know it, they've built New York City after a good, good enough time. Because that's what men do. They build shit. Entire cities. Buildings. Bridges. Space stations. Here's a question. Um, what heavy infrastructure project have you seen a group of women building? Because if I'm not mistaken, I haven't seen them build anything. And you know what's ironic? While I'm on this subject, I had this long conversation. I had my friend laughing like crazy. And he basically said, yeah, women don't build anything. But I immediately counted that and I said, you know what? Women don't build anything. What they do is they get men to go out and build it for them, and then they just move in and take the shit over. And I've said this before. When I think of these women, these modern women, I really think of the queen alien xenomorph in the movie Aliens and Alien 3. All this big-ass bitch wants to do is as soon as you, the colonist, you're the man, you've built your big colony. All they want to do is move into your atmospheric processor where it's nice and warm, and then they just start laying eggs. And then they turn you into a cocoon, and then they parasitize your ass, and then they wait for more colonists to come, and then they parasitize them too. So basically, when I think of these modern women, all I really think of is like a sci-fi alien parasite. Now, I know that's a stretch for some people. But that's exactly what I think of. I think of that queen alien. Because you think about it, these women are walking around. Yeah, we're queens. We queens. Yeah, we're all queens. The first thing that comes to my mind is that big queen alien laying them eggs. And she's got her ass sitting on welfare next to the atmosphere processor. And she's just laying all these damn eggs. And these, these, these little bastards get out of their shell. And next thing you know, they're stealing the wheels off your car. Or, or they're committing crimes out there. That's all. That's that's the way I see it. Now, I mean, you probably see it different, but I see it that way. So anyway, let's see. It says the women add their new communal home will keep their chosen family together for what family? <laughs> like, uh, don't you need men for that? But anyway, uh, ten or fifteen years later, are what children? 
our children might have grown up the friends at. So we all hope that we can still be together. Now, I don't know if these women, because it doesn't specifically say, I don't know if these women are married friends and they're doing this together or what, because it just says girlfriends. It doesn't say anything about whether they're married or not. Um, I can't really play this. I can't play the music, so I'm not gonna, but I'm just gonna skip through it because it says, uh, adolescence, what is this? We've known each other 20 years. When we arrived here, it was January of 2018, blah, blah, blah. Uh, design cost 4 million, glass box in the field. There's a beautiful rural kitchen, chat in the living room. I don't see any men anywhere, but the ironic thing is, you know, I was reading that story that I might bring up in a minute about they were saying by 2030 a large number of women are going to be single and childless and chances are a lot of American men are just going to go get their passports and they're going to see greener pastures. Yeah, because see, I'm not seeing any men in these pictures. But what's funny is when they talk about doing all the renovations, the question is, well, who actually did the work? Because you know it wasn't them. They didn't do this. If you take a look at, let's see, some of these uh, renovation photos, chances are if you were to look at them, you'll see men doing this work somewhere. Because, see, these women don't seem to understand. One way or another, you're going to need the work of a man to get something accomplished, especially when it comes to building something. So, you know, you have a choice. You can either have a husband who knows how to do this stuff or you're going to pay some man to come do it for you. Perfect example, mowing that lawn, trimming those hedges, cleaning those bushes, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you're going to pay some man to come do that. Now, I'm not saying that there's not some women who could do it on their own. Here's my question. What happens when the tiles on your roof need fixing? Chances are you're calling some man to come fix that. What happens when you take a shit and the shit don't flush? You're going to call a man, a plumber, to come fix that. So that's the point. It's like one way or another... You're going to pay. You're going to pay a man to get this done. What happens when your electricity dies and you're calling up the Con Edison or you're calling up the Keyspan and you're like, hey, listen, we don't have any electricity. It's 100 degrees outside. My air conditioner is not working. I have never seen a crew of women at Con Edison going out to repair high voltage power lines. I have never seen it. You're going to end up paying a man. So despite the fact that in this video I didn't see any men, we already know what the background is. Especially in China, because you have a large number of men working on scaffolds. And they're notorious for the number of scaffold deaths that they've had because men were falling off the damn scaffolds. Especially in Southeast Asia, uh, Guangzhou, China. Uh, that's like the uh, Cantonese province. Especially down there, they had a lot of issues with that. Because I remember when I was there... When I was living in China, I literally saw a, a crane collapse into a building. That was on uh, Guoding Road. I'll never forget that. Like, And they, they were building the building while I was there. But I literally saw that. And there was a couple of injuries from that. So, no, nah, you can't tell me nothing. But that's the story. So, you got these women. They're going to be living together like the Golden Girls. You remember the Golden Girls? Because I know some of y'all never saw that show. You remember the Golden Girls? I love that show. You remember the theme song? Because I every now and then I got a theme. Thank you for being a friend. Ba -ma -ma. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. And if you threw a party, invited everyone you knew. You would see the biggest gift would be from me. And the card attached would say, thank you for being a friend. You can't forget that show. That was the best show. You had, but now here you got these women living together. You got Blanche Devereaux, who's the hoe. And she's always bringing on lots of guys. And she's bringing in all these guys to the show. And she's bringing in all these guys. Even Everybody's calling her a hoe behind her back. Um... Then you got Dorothy. She's really tall. And uh, she was dating like one guy on and off. And that didn't go anywhere. And she was like old and she was tall. Right? And that I think that was the thing that kind of hurt her. Because she was so tall it was hard to get a guy 
because she was like six foot something. And then you had, of course, there was uh, Estelle Getty and um, Sophia. Sophia was the was the grandma. And uh, she was the one who was always cracking jokes and everything and, you know, talking about the Italian old country, I believe. Then on top of that, you had Betty White. And now she was playing, uh, who was that? Uh, so we had Sophia, Dorothy, Blanche, uh, Rose. Yes, you had Rose. And Rose, she was the, I guess you, you can't really say comic relief because she was actually, you know, funny. But there was definitely, but see, Blanche was the one I paid attention to because she was the hoe. I don't know why, but she was the most important. Well, she wasn't really the most important, but Blanche was the hoe. So basically, you got these women who are getting together. And they're playing the Golden Girls for real life. Now, I think that a lot of these Eastern Asian women, they could pull this off. A lot of these foreign, like Caribbean women, they could pull this off. But these American women, I really don't think that this is going to work. I really don't think so. It won't be long before somebody's cheating with somebody else's boyfriend. Blanche brings home the boyfriend. Dorothy cheats with him. It won't be long. It won't be long until somebody steal another one's clothes. It won't be long until somebody's complaining. Oh, you know, uh, Rose is filthy. She doesn't clean up. It won't be long. It won't be long. And I and I think the funny thing about it is it's only when women are actually with other women that they realize just how like hard other women are. And it's funny because there's women who literally say that. They're like, yeah. I tried lesbianism, and then I realized how bad it is for men. And then they come out and say, man, yeah, I really feel sorry for men. I never realized that men had it this bad. We are really horrible. And then you've had women who've done that transvestite stuff and the transsexual stuff, and then they become men, and then they realize just how hard men actually have it, and then they're like, oh, man, I never imagined men had it this hard. Oh, I feel so bad for men. And and that's exactly what it is. I mean, these are documented like stories. I mean, like you could literally watch this stuff on YouTube. It's it's just it's terrifying. It's really terrifying. So those that's the story right there. That's the story. Well, that's the first part of the story. So let me uh, just move on to the next part of the story because I don't want to keep you too long. So very very quickly, I continue to reference this story right here. Uh, study predicts forty five percent of women will be single by twenty thirty. Single men are lonely, but single women are empowered. Uh, they're basically poking at this 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 false dichotomy that has been created by the media. Uh, it says estimated that forty five percent of women ages twenty five through forty four will be single by twenty thirty. Now, twenty thirty is about seven years away, right? Even if I push that number to twenty forty. And give you another 10 years to get your shit together. Chances are you're not. But the bottom line is that this society and a number of Western societies, uh, Ukraine, Russia, Belarus, Moldova, a number of countries have noticed a disturbing trend. Um, women are divorcing in these countries. Uh, women are reaching uh, the age of womanhood. They have no husbands. They have uh, no rings on their finger. Some of them are having children out of wedlock or they're uh, divorced slightly after, uh, what is it, postpartum. But the bottom line is they're literally saying by 2030, the majority of these women are going to be single it says with modern dating market, and I, I, I covered the story a long time ago. It says nearly half of the women in their childbearing years will be without a male counterpart. See, the sad thing about it is the health of the state is live births. These countries cannot survive if they don't have enough children being born. So this is part of the reason why these governments are doing their best to allow corporations to make the women more and more lascivious. You've got OnlyFans, you've got Instagram. I, I could count a number of uh, examples where the government literally is pushing lasciviousness. But the bottom line is the health of the state is live birth. So it's within the government's desire to do this because they don't care about whether or not you have the family structure. They just need the births. They need soldiers. They need able-bodied workers. And that's it. Government doesn't care about the rest. The corporations want all of these women out of the house, 
want them working, want them pumping money into the system. I believe it is, uh, I was reading that they're, you know, putting women on the front lines in some countries. And I, I know that that's going on right now in Eastern Europe. And I was just reading a study where it was saying, uh, yeah, having women on the front lines might be advantageous because men may hesitate to pull the trigger while the women don't. And the women are twice as deadly. I could also provide the link to that story, too. I'll do that. My thinking is if I'm flying around in an F-35 at, at 40,000 feet, all you look like to me is a dot. So basically when I drop that j Dam bomb on top of your head and blow up you and everything within like a quarter mile, it's like, you know, your gender really didn't play that much of a role in whether or not I dropped that bomb, you know. So that's just how I see it. But anyway, it says, uh, we are told that to be single is to be empowered if you're a woman. If I had a penny for every time I've heard that. So anyway, where did it get to? Because you know they're they're talking about this is this is not the only um, story like this. There's a bunch of them, and whether or not you want to ignore it or not, the simple fact is the government isn't ignoring it. The government actually is looking into this, and I'm pretty sure that it doesn't take but too long to come on to YouTube or to go on to Google and see the obvious gender war that's going on, and it's funny to me. And this is the last thing I'll say, because I said I wasn't going to keep you long. There's all of these Manosphere men who refuse to use the word war. That's what this is. Gender war was a perfect term for it. You see how war works? This is like, you know, what you learn with Darwinism. You bring two sides together, they fight. A lot of them die. But those that remain are able to remake the anthill stronger and better. Right now, this is not a shooting war that's going on. What you see over in Ukraine and Russia, that's a shooting war. So whatever side is left will be the side that makes the future. But the bottom line is war itself means we are right. What you have is the ultimate battle between two ideologies. In one case, you have feminism. And on the other case, you have patriarchy and what they call, what is it? Uh, toxic masculinity, whatever you want to call it. So the issue ultimately is the men have already said, yo, we'll listen, we're going to get our passports, we're getting the fuck out of here, we're going to get ourselves a nice, beautiful foreign wife, half your age. And meanwhile, the women have fallen into this, we're going to get together and pay money to buy a mansion, and then we're going to have the men fix it up, and then we're going to live there forever and ever, amen. It's like, me personally, I just don't think that's going to work out very well. So the government is looking at this, and the government's like, wait a minute, what's wrong with these people? These people aren't fucking, these people aren't having children. These people are getting divorced at very high rates. These people are getting divorced at high rates across countries. We've got a problem. So what did they do? And I've talked about this before. What is the government doing? Well, if these people won't fucking have children, what we'll do is we'll let in illegal aliens, and we'll replace them. I think that we've reached a point where I don't even think racism is enough to keep things going the way they were going. I think we've reached a point where at this point the corporations are like, listen, we don't give a fuck what color these people are. Just get them here and get them fucking. And that's it. We need able-bodied workers. We need soldiers. Blah, blah, blah. Lockheed Martin's a corporation. Raytheon is a corporation. Keep that in mind. All of, the, all of these entities that depend on you going out right now, going to the mall, going to Walmart, going to Home Depot, going to Lowe's, even in your child's classroom. Just go in your child's classroom and I want you to just spin around 360 degrees and I want you to count the number of corporations that are there. They don't give a... F Do you think... that the corporations in your child's classroom, do you think they care what color the kids in that classroom are do you think they care what gender the color whatever the creed the religion do you think they care about any of that they don't the corporation's bottom line is get these fucking kids in here so that this way we can sell more markers if we're expo we want to sell more markers if we're uh hewlett packard we need to sell more computers if we're apple we need to sell more macs 
if we are a smart board, we need more smart boards in these rooms. The kids need more smart boards. If, if we're Apple, we need more iMacs and iPads in this classroom. They don't care what color these kids are. They don't care what gender these kids are. They don't care what race these kids are. They don't care what creed these kids are. They don't care what religion these kids are. These are corporations. Do you think Lockheed Martin gives a shit who's flying an F-22? The only thing Lockheed Martin expects is that you sell these F-22s. They don't care who's got it. They don't care if it's a black pilot or a white pilot, a Muslim pilot, or a Chinese, but they don't care. You think Raytheon gives a shit who's firing those missiles off the wingtips of that F-35? They don't care. They just need somebody there to do it. The health of the state is live births. So here you've got this feminism disease that's literally threatening the health of the state. Here you got these, these, and you know, it's funny, passport bros are pro-state because if you really think about it, passport bros are going, getting foreign wives and getting them pregnant and whatnot and having children, having families. Oh, the state loves that. What the state doesn't like is these women putting off childbirth until they're so old that now nobody wants them or they can't medically have children. Think about that for a second. So the state, the state is pretty, it's pretty obvious the way the state thinks. The health of the state is live births. So as long as we've got the people, we're good. As long as the corporations have the people, they're good. Because we got people to work and to spend money. And that's all it comes down to. As long as these corporate military industrial complex, as long as they've got people to fly those jets, as long as they got people to drive those tanks, they're good. But now you've literally got a disease threatening the number of people that they've got. They can't have that. What did China do, for example, since that first story is about China? What did China do? China banned effeminate males from television. China cuts off the internet during certain hours so these kids like can't sit there and play video games all goddamn night. They expect you to go meet some Chinese girl if you're a Chinese boy. Go meet some Chinese chick. And y'all do something and have some kids. They don't give a fuck. Um, what else? China, uh, they purposefully promote their culture and patriarchy and their traditional culture and whatnot. Now, that's just one country. Now, the Japanese and the South Koreans and the Chinese, they, they all do the same thing. Now, see, they understand this like listen we need young women in order to have these children so they refuse to marry these women if they're a certain age they call them in china they call them shung new if you get too old and you can't have children they call you shung new shung new leftover woman now in japan oh boy these guys are brutal these guys call the women leftover cake they call them christmas cake because in japan during Christmas, they give gifts of cake to celebrate the fact that, you know, when you know World War II was over, they didn't have sugar and confections and stuff. So now they're celebrating wealth through, you know, that lens. But they call the leftover cake, they call that Christmas cake because it's leftover cake. Because they can't eat all that cake. Like, if you, everybody's giving everybody else cake, you can't eat all that cake. Now, if you ask these Japanese guys, well, why do you refuse to marry these women? Why do you refuse to marry these women if they're over 26 and 27 and 28? Why, why, what's wrong with them? There's nothing wrong with them. Why, why are you do Well, a Japanese guy, he's going to get very angry with you. He's going to get real angry. He's going to look you right in the eyes. And he's going he's gonna to have these angry, this angry face on him. And he's basically going to reply... He's basically going to look at you. He's going to be like, you know, like his eyes, he's going to get very, very angry. He's going to get very, very visibly upset. And he's going to say, no, no, I want the Christmas carol. No, no, I want the Christmas carol. No, no, no. I got no gazebos. No, I want the Christmas carol. So, but yeah. That's the bottom line. So the thing about it is they got their own thing going on over there. And um, they they see that their fertility rates are down. They see their birth rates are down. They see that uh, their populations are in danger of aging. 
and they see that the future population is in danger of a possible shrinkage. So what are they doing? They're literally inviting. Some of these countries are literally beckoning passport bros. Now, I've used those videos a hundred times. They are beckoning passport bros to come to these countries and marry up these, these leftover cakes. They want you to come get that leftover cake. They don't mind. And, and then, you know, it's funny. Some people think that this is like an insult to the men or whatever. American men don't have a problem with 26, 27, and 28-year-old women. No, they have a problem with 34, 35, and 36-year-old women. They, they, don't have, they don't have a problem with the women who, you know, maybe by the Japanese standards consider leftover cake. American men don't have that problem. But these countries want you to come over and get that leftover cake. And most of the American men who I've seen getting leftover cake, they got huge smiles on their face. They're like, man, this is the best damn cake I ever had. You know? So my thinking is, I don't see a problem. But uh, that's basically the story. So you see this smug look on this chick's face? Yeah, well, I hope she has that look in 2030. And when, you know, when they're, when they're single and childless. And when they're, when they're shacked up with Sophia and Dorothy and Rose and Blanche and everything. Yeah, I hope she has that smug look on her face then. So we're going to see how independent all the ladies, independent, throw your hands up there, yeah. We're going to see just how independent you are right there. Okay, we're going to see just how independent you really are. Hello, welcome to the Asian Cafe. There are so many snacks waiting for you. You're going to need these big chopsticks. So here is the Chinese offering. Ding 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 Now, if you want something a little bit more fishy, we do have the Vietnamese snacks. Xin chào. Now, if you want something with more of a tropical vibe, like a mango vibe, we do have the Filipino section. Sara sara. Now, if you want to destroy the toilet, we do have the Thai snack here. Kamani kai. To be continued.